Sonic World DX is a 3D adventure styled Sonic game, but it has its fair share of differences. It differs from not only Adventure, but the modern booth games that currently persist in the series. So a natural question one might have for this game is does it represent a direction Sonic Team should consider for future releases, or is it just a fun idea? In this video, we're going to go over my thoughts on the subject matter. However, of course, everyone will have their own flavour, and nothing is going to be able to all players so feel free to let me know your opinions in the comments below. So, Sonic World DX allows you to play as a large cast of characters that have a very similar core gameplay, but differ in a few unique traits. This sounds, at surface level, a lot like Sonic Adventure's approach, and even the classic games, where all characters, at their most minimal point, play the same, and then they have flavorful differences that might affect gameplay, or just the style of it. But in Sonic World DX, the traits of the characters, their attributes, jump height, acceleration, speed, that sort of thing, are far more exaggerated in their scope compared to either the classics or the adventure games. In Sonic World DX, your basic acceleration, even for slower characters, will take you to your top speed very fast and your highest speeds are usually quite a bit higher than anything you would have seen in normal adventure gameplay. This is not inherently a bad thing, but it does come with a couple caveats that the modern boost games also involve themselves with, and in that way it shares some similarities with the boost formula. For instance, since your characters go quite a bit fast, the handling of them are not as smooth as the adventure games would allow. In Sonic Adventure, moving your characters at any speed tier felt responsive and, most importantly, predictable. You knew where Sonic or whoever it was was going to go and how they were going to turn when you pressed the analog stick or jumped. And that's important because you want to be able to control your character in a speed platformer as reliably as if you yourself were doing the running. You know exactly what your body is going to do, hopefully, when you make a decision to do something. And Sonic Adventure was very good at allowing that same confidence in your actions. In Sonic World DX, though, because the characters have this high speed, high acceleration, high jump, they do feel a little bit slippery and harder to steer at high speeds. And as a result, the developers included the drift, which is a mechanic brought in by the boost games, which are notorious for their poor handling. And drifting is used to compensate for that. Now, is the drift absolutely necessary in this game? No, no, it's not. You don't need to drift a lot of the time. You're turning or jumping or slowing down can seal the deal for you, but the drift was included because the developers of Sonic World DX probably also acknowledged that yes, in their game the handling is not quite as smooth as in Sonic Adventure. Another quirk with the gameplay of Sonic World DX is the way its camera works. I think it's tied to how they have allowed characters to wall run on surfaces with ease compared to some of the other Sonic games out there. When you go over some uneven territory, sometimes the camera will try to angle itself with the eyes of your character model, but that means if you were going up a slope, even if it's a slight scope, the camera will now angle upwards into the air and then swoop down on the way down. This doesn't happen all the time. Sometimes the camera is given a more set position during an area of the stage, but also sometimes it's free roam and during those states, the camera can go crazy when you're going over uneven ground and it's a little bit disorienting. Of course, this isn't a feature that you would need to carry on if the modern games were going to incorporate this playstyle, but it is something I felt like it was worth mentioning here. The main perk of having all of the playable characters work off the same unified core of gameplay is that the developers have a far easier time producing multiple playable characters and they all have access to the spin dash, allowing them to take part in most aspects of typical Sonic gameplay. They are deferred into slightly different classes of speed, flying and power, 
but the only real differences these classes give the characters is that power characters tend to do more damage and can glide, flying characters can fly in some way, speed characters have access to the homing attack and the light speed dash. This approach obviously works, but it does lose some aspects of character identity in my opinion. Not in that they all feel exactly the same, because again, Shadow can Chaos Control, Chaos Spear, SBO can cling on to walls. There is a fair amount of difference in the cast, and they, the developers definitely worked hard to get that through. But in the adventure games, and arguably in Sonic 3 and Knuckles as well, player characters didn't just differ in what they could do, but the stages they found themselves in, their objectives, and what they couldn't do. Sonic not being able to punch boulders away and access certain pathways helped Knuckles feel more unique and give him more to do that was different to Sonic. In the adventure games, only Sonic and Shadow having the light speed dash differed them from other characters like Metal Sonic in the multiplayer. Sonic World DX's characters don't have such independence aside from the cast, and it can, even with their differences, make them kind of blend the same because for most of the stages you can beat them without using unique character traits and this brings light to the question are different playstyles such a bad thing the sonic community seems to be stigmatized against having characters play too differently to one another mostly because of sonic 06 which for a lot of things in this franchise is the same dead horse that's used to be over and over for anything that people just don't really want to re-attempt anymore but i think there were some decent advantages brought in by having unique play styles Sonic Adventure obviously was the first one to do this in a big way and people didn't like everything it had to offer, but that's true for anything. Even if you look at a game like Sonic Colors where there's only one playstyle, that doesn't mean everyone that picks up that game is going to like that one playstyle. And if they don't like it and there's nothing else there to offer to them, then they're just going to leave. A lot of people will always talk about how, well, if you give multiple playstyles in a Sonic game, you're just getting less of the one you want that's true if you only like one of them the chances are if you like a play style because they're not going to be a hundred percent different even the adventure games had a base core that all characters were built off of so if you like one there's a good chance you'll at least like one other one and even if you didn't which would be unlikely Someone else who don't like the one you do may like one of the other ones. So I think that argument is far over exaggerated in its importance when you consider that other people might like the things you don't like and it might make a stronger player base overall. Because the adventure games did allow characters to diverge more than just their options in standard levels, we got to see more unique set pieces built around a specific skill set to differ them more importantly in the gameplay. Knuckles, he could climb, he could glide, he could spin dash, he could punch. If you put Knuckles in a Sonic level, for the most part, he would be able to complete it. If it relied on light speed dash, he would not, but you could just give him a slightly altered version of that level. But the point I'm getting at is that the Knuckles we get in Adventure could play Sonic stages, but instead he's got the Emerald Hunt to give him a more unique feel, and it's slightly more sculpted towards his skill set. Tails being the flying character would completely break Sonic's levels on the other hand, and that's why they gave him races which kind of ignore most of the principles of Sonic gameplay and just turn it into get to the end as quick as you can, because for the Tails we got in that game, it was really the only way to salvage some sort of challenging skillful event for Tails. In Sonic World DX, Stages are designed with every type of character in mind since everyone can always play it and it needs to be able to be completed by them. But this has the downside of letting some of the stages or at least segments of stages feel a little bit over designed, cluttered, lots of visual information. You look over a landscape, there's about three different paths with three different character exclusive archetype paths in those and it can get a bit confusing for some players. This was especially true in the Mystic Jungle because it's a very fast stage but it has 
flying type uh, hoops everywhere that if you were a flying character, you would jump in them and start doing a flying combo. Problem is, most Sonic games that were not this one have these hoops in them as well, and when a character uses them, they get a benefit out of it. In Heroes, which is what this version of the hoops are based off of, it slightly was different in where sometimes the hoops would only really be usable for the flying character. But the important thing Heroes did in those instances is make sure the hoops were only reachable by a flying character in the first place. The hoops that could be accessed by anybody were hoops that would reward those characters, or at the very least, it wouldn't kill them. In Sonic World DX on Lost uh, on Mystic Jungle, for instance, I was playing as Espio, who's a speed character, running down these fast corridors, a hoop appears, and Sonic Muscle Memory for playing any other Sonic game tells me, ah, I need to jump into this hoop right now. So you jump into this hoop and then you realize, oh, hang on a minute, it's only for a flying character, and then you die. You might think, oh, well, just don't jump into the hoops then. But again, you're going fast, you've played previous games, you expect the hoop to give you a reward, and then it just kills you. I'm not going to say it's completely the game's fault and not any of the player's fault there, but at the same time, it's a bit of a confusing mis-signaling to the player. And keep in mind, since you can play this game with flying characters, power characters, switching in between, you would perhaps completely understand that the hoops are only for flying characters and still muscle memory jump into it anyway, because two levels ago you were playing as flying characters jumping into the hoops all the time. This is a little bit of a problem with having everyone being able to play everything. But an even bigger one is that characters that can fly or jump and maintain good speed and airtime, like Amy or Rouge or any flying character really, kind of break all of the level design that has been put into Sonic World DX. A lot like Tails' problems in Sonic Adventure 1. These characters can just skip over vast quantities of the stages like it's nothing and make some stages just not even a real level. Combat as well. People are mixed on combat in Sonic, but even if it's not the most in-depth system, the point of combat is so that the levels don't feel like they're just these empty playgrounds that Sonic runs through. They're actually inhabited places with things going on and things that are trying to prevent you. And the problem is that when you can just fly over everything, those combat encounters may not be there. But even when you address them, the style of combat that this game is based around is simple. Everything dies in one hit, except the big egg hammers. But the egg hammers lack their weapon, they lack a helmet to protect them, and although they take multiple hits to destroy, all they do is slowly walk towards the player, which means that the only time you're probably going to get hit by them is if you jump into them with a character that doesn't have an attack jump because you forgot and take damage. I'm not saying that we need Sonic Unleashed, you can't move forward until you clear the room levels of combat, but this amount just makes it a trivial thing. It's more of a formality rather than an actual obstacle. Of course, none of these elements are game breakers. This can still be a fun product. Sonic World DX is a fun product, but if we're talking about the official Sonic titles and should they adopt this style of gameplay, hopefully, when a title is officially published, it was given proper development time and a proper budget to fund it. And under those conditions, personally, I would prefer having a game that has different play styles that have been properly fleshed out with dedicated level designs to give a variety to the gameplay experience but also a consistency and I wouldn't want these characters with these highly overtuned traits and attributes because of the downsides of it trivializing the level design. People can say that it's fun to be overpowered and yeah it is fun but when you're playing a game that is already about going fast, when you're able to just trivialize its challenges, going overpowered will only be fun for so long and then the rest of the game will fall flat. If you've got a more balanced power level for the game itself, you'll be able to appreciate the level design and the small differences a lot more than if you were overpowered. So for me, no. 
Sonic World DX is not the way I would want the main series to go forward. Which isn't me saying I want more boost, because I also don't want the boost. World DX is definitely a fun time and a nice thing to see put into action, but it does feel like a fan game. And I don't mean that as an insult, I just mean how in the official products, Things are hopefully consistent, minus the bugs. But in this game, the characters are just off the wall, uh, overtuned. The camera, as I mentioned, has its weird habits of moving around. There are some design contradictions, like how they put the flying hoops around in places where in any other Sonic game, you should jump into it. And here, only sometimes you should jump into it. Not trying to criticise the game, I think it's good and I can understand why many people may say that this is what Sonic should do, but these were my reasons why I don't think it's the future of the franchise. But, of course, I'm sure you have your own take on the matter, so as I mentioned before, let me know in the comments down below. And also, thank you for watching this video all the way to the end, it really does help out the channel and lets me know you appreciate what I'm doing. I hope to see you next time and that you have a great day. This is the Mighty Emperor, signing off.